about you but I always felt that there was never a president more suited to the world of media than the late president Ronald Reagan now this is because of course Mr Reagan himself had enjoyed a very fruitful career in front of the camera and in fact got very involved with directing and all sorts of stuff he was a very clever and shrewd man no two ways about it but by the 1960s this is long before of course he had his eye on the White House and presidency he was trying to make something of a comeback and as ever he decided to well shall we say create something of a storm literally live on national television let me explain morning how are you nice to see you thank you so much I know people tell me off for waving if it's daft and you're offended be offended we enjoy it don't we you're still I know I'm still waving don't take any notice of the naysayers it's good to be daft it's good to have a bit of fun what's wrong with being a bit stupid well, I know, what do you mean a lot stupid, Neil? No, but you know, <laughs> but it is good, isn't it? It's good to be daft. I always think, yeah, I love these things when you go to a park, if you sneak on a kid's ride and just have a quick whirl on it, it takes you back to being 10, doesn't it? Who cares? You know, live. That's what it's about. Now, someone who really did live a life was none other than the late former president of the United States, Ronald Reagan. What a life, you know, what a career. Now, as you know, many people know that I've been lucky enough to interview and meet so many stars of the golden era of Hollywood. And one of the biggest for me and very interesting was none other than the late actor Mickey Rooney. Now by the 1960s Mickey admitted to me that things weren't going particularly well. Movies were bombing, he tried his hand at a TV series and of course it'd been a long time since Andy Hardy had been a mega hit alongside all of those MGM musicals Lassie and Judy Garland and he needed something you know to kickstart his career. Now at the Golden Globes in 1961 it was going to be hosted by the future president that's right Ronald Reagan from the Beverly Hilton Hotel a very prestigious event and this really was the sort of thing when there were real stars literally in attendance now what happened was Mickey Rooney was hoping to present an award and that was fine you know it wasn't going to be anything anything out of the ordinary that sort of stuff but he really needed something to kickstart the career now what happened was that Ronald Reagan said to him have you got any ideas he thought about the ideas and it was this he decided that he felt well alongside Ronald that they could come up with something that would in fact shake up the award ceremony and what better way than having a co-presenter now initially this idea was put towards Marilyn Monroe but Marilyn of course had just come out of the movie let's make love and was busy with the misfits and trying to realign her career as a serious actress and she didn't really want to sort of, you know, make fun of the platinum dumb blonde image any further. She decided things were going to be different. So they looked around again. And as you can imagine, Mickey knew a lot of people in Hollywood, lots of big names. But sadly for him, a lot of people didn't necessarily want to share the stage with Mickey Rooney. As he said, he was a goofer and he, they knew that he would upstage them whichever way. He hadn't banked on this though, because finally Jane Mansfield said, all thanks to a very persuasive dinner with Ronald Reagan, that she would in fact co-present the award. And so what you're seeing here is this very fun, uh, very credible sort of thing uh, in the Golden Globe Awards, because the idea was that Jane naturally would wear her very highest heels, of which she did and she looked literally spectacular on the night. Now, as I've said to you before, Jane Mansfield was no slouch. She was a very, very clever woman, could speak many languages and knew exactly what she was selling. She knew standing alongside the much shorter Mickey Rooney in a rather revealing upholstered dress was going to get her and him a lot of attention. They rehearsed this particular thing backstage before coming out of the audience and onto the stage of the Beverly Hilton all choreographed by the very brilliant Ronald Reagan. Naturally, this particular story got the front pages of the time. It really did inject some interest back into Jane Mansfield's career and finally she got free of her contract with 20th Century Fox and was able to go over and make some more European films for a much higher fee. Mickey Rooney himself said that there was another talk of a TV series but he said a lot of people spoke about it for a very long time and he was very kind in saying that both Ronald Reagan and Jane Mansfield were so sweet in wanting to help him kickstart his career at a point when things weren't going necessarily the right way. 
But it's interesting, isn't it, to think that Ronald Reagan, as I said, when he became president of the United States, and I very much remember him when I was at school, he really was very good at being a public speaker. And you can see here in this particular clip just how well he was at hosting a very prestigious event in front of all of his peers. But who knew behind the scenes even choreographed the best scene, apparently, of the night. Neil Sean in the very heart of London.